Well, that ain't the spirit of the Son, honey. That's the spirit of Christ. Christ, first and foremost, is the spirit of God. For there's born in the city of David, Christ the Lord. Who's the Lord? Jehovah God Almighty. Who's Christ? The Spirit of God. God himself. Amen. God is a spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, searching what, what manner of time? Who? Samuel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, 14, minor prophets all the way to Malachi. How did they prophesy? Searching what, what manner of time? The Spirit of Christ that was in them uh, did signify of the grace that should come to us uh, and the sufferings of Christ. Not Christ, Junior. Christ made him, the Spirit of God made himself a body of flesh as Christ. So searching what, what manner of time the Spirit of Christ that was in them did signify of the sufferings of Christ. It's not Christ Jr. Christ is Christ. Christ is God manifest in a body of flesh and blood. He is the Father of glory. Beside him there is no God. That is your message. That's what we are going to preach until this place. And we have fulfilled our call. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you something. You can pray in the name of Jesus, fast in the name of Jesus, do all in the name of Jesus, but honey, if you don't take on his name, if you don't have your saved through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Jesus said, except you believe that I am he, the Father of glory, you will die in your sins. I didn't say it. Jesus said it. Amen. The Lord Jesus said it. Well, why? Because he's not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. God is not willing that any should perish. Would you die on a cross, shed your own blood, literally make yourself of no reputation, that means set aside your dignity, honor, and glory. Come and under the law that you made, the judge and the court leaves the judge's bench, comes down in the seat of condemnation in judgment, and take your place and say, move over, I'm going to die for you. And then try to destroy every one of them in hell. That'd be psychotic. God's not willing to any superiors, but all should come to repentance. The problem is we've got of this world has blinded their eyes. Well, guess what your job is? To proclaim the everlasting God the truth of the word. That's what your job is. I don't care. I don't care what your hang-ups are and how you fuss, cousin, knock each other and the strife, envy, hate, malice and everything else goes on the body. You are the body of the Christ. Amen. You look at a man long enough, you'll find problems wrong with everybody. You can put me under a microscope because I thank God, Paul said, ah, it's a small thing if I be judged of you. Amen. I judge not mine own self. But there's one that judges me. Even the word that I preach, it will judge me at that day. Not you or anybody else. I don't receive praises of man, Jesus said, but of God only. So that's what you look at. Don't give a flip what somebody else said. I've had preachers come in bad on a wet hand, going to set me down, show me this. I'll tell them one thing. I'll sit there and listen to you. I'll listen to what you say because I want to be saved. But when I have you some questions, when you get through show me what you think of God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy, I'm going to ask you for a few questions. For 10 years, I'm the Houston media station. I was the only one God preacher there. And they tried everywhere in the world to convert me. And they'd walk out of there and they'd say, we ain't never heard it like this before. We weren't taught it like this. I didn't know that was there. Well, honey, you better look at it. You better search the scripture for in them. You think you have eternal life. And these are they that testify of me, not of us. Me, me, Jesus Christ, the word of God on his flesh, are dipped in blood. His name is called the word of God. You have been entrusted with this word. How great a call do you have that you're ambassadors of Christ. You're in Christ's stead. Christ, God was in Christ reconciling the world and himself. Now we pray you in Christ's stead. He's not here. He's preaching through you and you and you and every one of you. Hallelujah. How great a call. Now you're ambassadors of Christ. You know what an ambassador's duty is? He has all the power of the country that's sitting there. I'm an ambassador of the United States. That means if whatever they say, whatever I say and do, that's the United States to you. You see, we don't understand the power of the church and the power that's given unto men, the church of the living God. 
When Jesus breathed on them in John 20, verse 20, and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whew. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins you remit, they're remitted. And whosoever sins you retain, they're retained. Why did they say, Paul, they sent over here, said, I've already judged, being absent with the body, but be present with you in the spirit. To take such as one that has done this and deliver him over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh that he might be saved in the day of the Lord. Why did they contact Paul? Because the church was given judgment. Hallelujah. Not one person, not some pontiff sitting over there in Rome saying, thy sins be forgiven thee. I'm talking about the body of Christ. The ministry of reconciliation. To who? Who was he given to? The bride of Christ. His body, the body of it. As you've been baptized with one spirit and one body, so also is Christ. I was crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. The life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Hallelujah. For me to live is Christ, to die is gain. Hallelujah. That means that you and I have a job to do. You are a living epistle. You are a testimony. You, your life bears witness of Jesus Christ. The life I live, I live by the faith. It is Christ revealed in through you. Hallelujah. That's the reason why you bring that they may see, they, 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 the world may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Who's your Father in heaven? Jesus Christ. Somebody said, I don't understand that, Brother Beard. Let me talk to you a little bit. The ones over in Africa, the Trinity, 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 everything in Trinity world. You know why? Because Mr. Babylon the Great, the mother of hearts, abomination of the earth, had deceived the whole world. Everybody's Trinity. It is a stout spirit. But what God's doing in the last days is giving the revelation of Jesus Christ. Revelation 1.8, I'm Alpha and Omega, which is, was, and is to come. The beginning and the ending, which is, was, and is to come. The Almighty. That's Jesus Christ. He said, I'm the Almighty God. Revelation 1.8. Somebody said, well, no, Jesus is set at the right hand of God. You better take a look at it again. It says, Christ is seated at the right hand of God. It says, Christ is seated at the right hand of God. You better get this. I said, Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Amen. And we're made to sit together in those heavenly places in Christ Jesus. When it said Christ is seated, Christ is set. That's S-I-T. That's a state, a place, a being of glory. Jesus said, you believe in God? Believe also in me. My Father's house has many mansions. We're not so what I told you. I go to prayer place for you. For you, not for me. Not for me, for you. <laughs> Where did Jesus go? Revelation 3.21 says, if you overcome, you will sit down with me in my throne. Even as I overcome, did he sit down there? No, as I overcame, I'm sat down with my father in, not around, not by, in, in his throne. S-E-T, not S-I-T, S-E-T, S-E-T, -E a state of glory. He came from the father. And went back to the Father. That's the reason many people do not understand righteousness. When the Holy Ghost comes, he'll reprove, reprove the world of sin, righteousness of judgment of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I came from God. I became a man. And I went back to God. Here's what people don't get. They don't understand that God made himself of no reputation. Jesus in the form of God. Somebody said, well, why didn't he reveal his name in the Old Testament? Because... He did not take on a permanent abode yet. Would you go buy you a rental house and pour concrete, put your name in it, chisel your name on the walls? No, it's a rental house. You're just passing through. But if you're going to get into a house and abide there forever, then you would put your name on everything. God showed himself in a temporary abode in the Old Testament as the angel. They ate with Abraham. He called him Lord, capital L-O-R-D. Who was that? It was God Almighty. Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it. Before Abraham was, I am. Well, Jesus, you're not yet 50 years old. You look at Jesus as the flesh. They've got him as the flesh. They don't understand that he is the Father. There's the problem. There is the problem. Somebody said, he's not the Father. Oh, yes, he is. The Son of God, the revelation of the Son of God, you must have two components. You must have all that God is, Father, Word, and Holy Ghost. 
in a body of flesh and blood as a man. Now you've got the Son of God. If you've got just a man, you don't have the Son of God because the Son of God is the Father manifest. He is the image of the invisible God. That's the reason he said, you believe in God? Believe also in me. Father's house of many mansions will not so but have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Where I am, there you may be also. Whether I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas saith unto him, and Lord, we know not whether I goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am that way, that cherubim of glory that kept the way of the tree of life. I am that flaming sword. I am that spirit of truth. I am that life, because all life is now given in the Son. All life is in the Son. Well, no, it's in the Father. Go to the Father, believe in the Father all day long. It's through the Son of God that you have your redemption, which is the Father manifest in a body of flesh and blood. And you have to confess him that he is the Lord of glory. Amen. You don't do it. You're, you're hell bound. I don't care if somebody says, well, I speak in tongues, give tithes of all possess, raise the dead for breakfast every morning, have blue scar sparks fly off my heel when I walk. You don't know that he's the Father. You're going to die in your sins. I didn't say it. The Lord Jesus did. I'm going to tell you one thing. You can get there and get mad at the preacher all day long. I've seen them go, they get sad, mad, or glad. Jesus being in the form of God, thought not Robert to be equal to God. Watch how he worked salvation in and of himself. He looked for a man, he could find none. Therefore, he said, my own arm brought salvation to myself. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. No, Brother Beard, the Son of God was. Nope. The Son of God wasn't in Christ. The Son of God is Christ. Amen. Revealed in a body of flesh and blood. God was in Christ. Well, Christ was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, Christ. How much did he love you? For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, and whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but everlasting life. I know that. 1 John 3, 16. For hereby perceive you the love of God, because he laid down his life for us. Therefore, we have to lay down our lives for the brethren. How about that one? How much did he love you? He loved you enough when he couldn't find a man, because all sin comes short of the glory of God, none good, no, not one. God himself took on a body of flesh and blood. How did he do it? He made himself of no reputation. Philippians 2, 6. Took upon him the form of a servant. He's still God. He just set aside his dignity and glory, a self-imposed limitation that only God could do, and come in under the law. <laughs> and what the law could not do, and that is weak in the flesh, God sending his own son. How did he send his own son? Made of a woman, made in under the law. And what the law could not do, and that it was weak in the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful, not likeness of sinless flesh, and the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. Why? Because he's going to be tempted at all points like as we are yet without sin. Hebrews 4.15. Hebrews 2, for as much as then as the children are protectors of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. That in all things he was made like unto his brethren. He became one of us. Amen. He became one of us. Amen. So he could bring us to him. He made himself of no reputation, laid aside his dignity, his glory, came in under the law himself as a man. Well, wait a minute, Brother Beard. If he's in under the law as a man, then that means God, God can't get, well, that's right. It's the reason he made himself of no, not some reputation, no reputation. Totally emptied out. It's not a process of emptying out. It's emptied out. God put a self-imposed limitation on himself that he would not work in his glory. He would become that man. Laid aside his glory. Laid aside his glory. Made himself of no reputation. Amen. Took upon him the form of a servant made in the likeness of man and being found in fashion as a man. He humbled himself to the death of the death of the cross. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him. That's right. Jesus said destroy this temple in three days. I will raise it up because I have it. I am the father. Amen. Well, wait a minute. While he's over here on this side, he's one of us. He's one of us. He's a flesh and blood man just like us. Is he working as a God man? No. He's working as God totally emptied out. Amen. No, no reputation. Can owed himself. Emptied out of glory to become that man in under the law. Now, only as this man fulfills that law, how low did he go? Into the meanest of flesh. The poorest of families. And he cannot work through this man until this man crucifies the flesh with the affections and the lust. And only as he obeys it can that spirit that he is work through that man at all. Do you understand that? 
This man is emptied out of glory. He's a man just like you and just like me. He's going to have to fast. He's going to have to pray. He said, my father's greater than I. Why? Because there is still a partition between God and man. Just because God became that man, it didn't do away with that wall until blood is shed, honey, it's not done away with. Well, it's God. I know it's God. You don't have to persuade me. I know who he is. Well, Brother Beard, he's praying to the Father. I know, because he has made himself of no reputation, took upon himself the form of a servant in the meanest of flesh as a man, not a God-man. That's emptied out so he can work salvation for us as a man. He is our kin's man redeemer. Amen. He's under the law. In the fullness of time, God sent forth his son. How? Galatians 4, verse 4. Made of a woman, made and under the law. Give me 15 minutes and I'll be through. Somebody said, well, I don't think it makes any difference, you know, really. I just believe in Jesus and I don't worry about the rest of it. It'll all pan out. I believe in the pan out doctrine. <laughs> just believe and it'll pan out. No, you've got a Bible there. It is the word of God. If you do not obey that word, then you're not of him. If you are of God, then you owe what? If you love God, you will keep his commandments. If you're not of God, then sooner or later, that's where the chaff set with the wheat. Where? In the church. Right. See, what we don't realize is that the devil himself, God literally allowed and sent the strong delusion that all believe I lie and be damned who receive not the love of the truth that might be saved. God sent the strong delusion. <gasps> oh, God wouldn't do that. You, God said, I kill, I make alive. Shall, be, shall there be evil in the city? And I, the Lord God, have not done it. I have my way in the wind and in the whirlwind. I, the Lord God, do all these things. But if you think it's the devil, the devil is toothless. He can't do you nothing. It's God that works in and through you for his own good pleasure. Amen. God working in you both are willing to do of his own good pleasure. Let me tell you this. And at the day of Christ, the day he be not soon shaken a letter from us, and again to gather him, soon shaken a letter of us, an angel, as at the day of Christ is at hand. For that day will not come until it come, a falling away first. Is anybody seeing a falling away? What it's been in the last 20 or 30 years? Come on. There used to be revivals. Y'all know. There used to be revivals go two, three, four months at a time. Now you're doing good if you get a man four, four nights, or a woman preach four nights in a whole week. What's happened to America? Christianity now spurned that, spit on, like we're some kind of idiots that ain't got enough sense coming out of the rain. Evil men and seducers waxing worse and worse. Perilous times coming, men, heady, high-minded, truth makers, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. How you deny the power that he's God Almighty? <laughs> you deny him. With cunning devised fables have what? Come to the fables, denied the Holy One, the only Lord God. Therefore, for this reason, God will send us to a strong delusion. What? That that then, for that day will not come till they come a falling away first. We're seeing the church fall away. People say, ah, I don't have to have that. You know, I'm saved. I go out, drink, smoke, cuss, do everything I want to do. I mean, after all, I'm saved. They don't have to bring forth no works, fruits under perfection. You don't have to grow up into him in all things. You don't have to come into a perfect man to the measure of the stature of Jesus Christ. For whom he did foreknow, them he did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son. And those that he predestinated, them he also called. Them that he called, he also justified. Them that he justified, them he also glorified to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. What happens if you don't conform to the image of Jesus Christ? Somebody says, well, if I don't, will you die in the faith until somebody does? Because God has provided some better thing for us that they without us should not be made perfect. When the body of Christ comes into perfection, it will perfect everything all the way back to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, and the whole, whole, whole body of God Almighty. Amen. There has to be a body coming to perfection. The path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more into the perfect day. No, it doesn't. We've got less word now than we've ever had. Why? Because nobody stirs himself up. Give me five more minutes. Your God became a man. Made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant. Philippians 2, 6 through 10. He 
literally became in the meanest of flesh. Your kinsman, Redeemer. He has got a middle wall of partition that he subjected himself to in sufferings. That is God. Yeah, God has made himself of no reputation to be that man. That man is a man. Just like you, for as much as the children protects of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, exactly like us. Therefore, you have not a high priest that cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Why? Because he's been there. He's done it. There's a metal wall of partition. Can he just jump back in and save us right there? No. First thing that man's got to do is what? He's got to fulfill the law. Why? Because uh, without the law, sin is not imputed where there is no sin. The law was given that sin might appear exceedingly sinful. The law is not a ministration of life, but a ministration of death. For by the works of the law, no flesh should be saved. Who's got to fulfill that law? God does in the form of a man, and a man who is emptied out of glory, and just like you and just like me, which the devil said, it's impossible. No man can do it. Yeah, well, you don't understand God. Because God made himself of no reputation, did not break his law. God didn't come under that law. He made a man to come under the law that had his spirit, but his spirit was of no reputation. He's a man. I'm telling you, God became a man. Oh, no, Brother Beard, God can't do that. That's what the Muslims say. Allah can't be a man. Fine, go on and burn. Meet Allah. I've, I've debated him. Meet your Allah with no blood. See where you wind up, boy. Grab your Surah 91, kill the infidels, and get your 72 virgins. You think there's 17 virgins up there? Rock on. <laughs> no, it's in their Quran. Don't think that's, I thought it was a joke. That's not a joke. It's written in their Quran. Hey, I don't want to say that. How many times over the last 10 years I've kept, kept saying over and over again, because America has turned their back on God. The people that forget God. That's right. Any nation that forgets God, God said, I'll turn it into hell. We have prayed, preacher after preacher, not only us, but bless God, we're not the only one. God. Whenever he, when he said sin is a reproach to any people, 